Welcome to Sunday Worship from North Yorkshire Coast Methodist Circuit. I'm Reverend John Staten, a supernumerary minister in the circuit, and I shall be leading worship in this service, while my wife, Reverend Anne Staten, will be reading from scripture and preaching. The hour has already come for you to wake up from slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over, the day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us praise God as we sing. Lord God, you are a mighty king. In the Bible we read stories of your amazing deeds. We know that you are just as powerful now as you were then. Not the sharpest eye or the keenest ear has ever detected a God like you. Great God, we praise you, for you are worthy of all worship. None can predict what you will do. You act in ways that we do not expect. 
sometimes with awesome power like an earthquake, and sometimes in the low murmuring of a whisper. You meet those who do right and remember those who obey you. Great God, we praise you, for you are worthy of all our worship. You sent Jesus to be our Saviour, taking people by surprise in the way that he came to live among us as one who serves. When he died on the cross for us, you raised him from death, showing that nothing is beyond your power. Great God, we praise you, for you are worthy of all our worship. You send your spirit on your church, giving gifts to your people so that they may encourage each other and prepare for the day when Jesus comes again. You strengthen us to walk in your way and you have promised to be faithful to the end. Great God, we praise you, for you are worthy of all our worship. Lord, we know that you are our loving Father, and you want to guide us in the right way. We have come to say sorry because we are not always prepared to be guided by you. We enjoy the stories of Jesus, but do not always look to him as an example. We make judgments about ourselves and others without asking for the guidance of your Holy Spirit. We think that we can do what is right all by ourselves without any help from you. Forgive us, Lord, for all the ways in which we fail to listen to you. We thank you that because of Jesus, we can know that we are forgiven. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we may listen to your words and follow in your ways for Jesus' sake. Amen. We join together in the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We read from Mark chapter 13, reading verses 24 to 37. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert, 
you do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their own assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you are sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. May the Lord help us to understand his word. In this season of Advent, we've been looking at how light conquers darkness. And as we look forward to celebrating the first coming of Jesus, we will also be looking forward to his second coming prophesied in scripture. This is a season of light. Already in the streets, Christmas lights have been hung and lit. Christmas trees are lighted up to light our shopping centers. Home Christmas trees are shining into the darkness from our windows and candles are lit on tables and on every surface. All this makes us feel happy and joyful. Advent, however, is about more than just looking forward to Christmas Day. 
It is also about looking forward to the second coming of Jesus the King. In Mark 13, Jesus begins to talk about that event. He says that it will follow a time of great desolation, when there is hunger and thirst, when people are dispossessed, when the climate changes dramatically. People will be hungry, people will be scared, there will be warfare and living will not be easy. Strangely, we might recognise some of these things, not in the distant future, but at this moment. Does that mean that Jesus will be coming soon? Well, the Bible tells us that we cannot know when that day might be, for only God the Father knows it. But it tells us we must be ready when he comes. Remember the biblical story of the bridesmaids who were waiting for the bridegroom. The sensible ones had made sure that their oil lamps were filled with oil, so that if the bridegroom was late, they would still have plenty of oil to light their way. Some of the bridesmaids, however, thought to save themselves a few pence and only half filled their lights. The bridegroom was late and when he arrived, their lights had gone out. The bridegroom was so angry that he forced the bridesmaids to leave the house. They could not go into the celebrating banquet with him. It reminds us that we must always be ready, ready for the second coming of the King, whenever that might be. What are we to do then in our time of waiting, in our time of readiness? Well, we are to look for signs of his coming. And we're given a clue as to what those signs might be. They might be unusual happenings, things that don't normally happen, maybe floods or volcanoes or earthquakes. They might be warfare spreading throughout the world in which we live. There might be serious famine, not just affecting a few countries, but affecting many. We have come to realise, even those of us who are not perhaps Christians, that our planet now has a limited life. We know that because we've been told it by the many scientists who are tracking climate change. It will not last forever, as we once thought. Our world one day will cease to be. So we need to be vigilant in looking for signs of the coming of Jesus. We do not know whether the time we have less is short or long, but we must indeed be ready. In the days when cities were much smaller than they are now, they were walled. We have signs of a walled city in Chester, not that far away from us, and in York. Walls built around the city to protect those inhabitants within. When those cities were fully walled, and the only way to get in was through the entrances, there were watchmen set at every door. And the watchmen were there day and night to make sure that no one attacked the city. We are the watchmen, warning the world of danger, warning the world that one day Jesus is going to come again, warning the world that our planet will not last forever. Many of us feel we live in desolate times now, but of course we know there have been desolate times before. There have been warfare before, world warfare before, there has been famine before. But rarely in our history have so many signs come together. Even in our fortunate temperate climate here in the UK, we have had floods worse than anything we can ever remember. And people have lost their homes and their possessions in a single night. There is no doubt now that climate change is happening. And unless we do something about it, within a few centuries or even less, our world will become unlivable. This will cause great distress to those who live in hot countries, but it will affect all of us in many ways. So we need to be ready at all times for whatever may be coming. 
My mother-in-law, who sadly died a number of years ago now, suffered badly from Parkinson's disease. One day she showed me a small packed hole door and she told me where she kept it. I'm not quite sure why, because we didn't actually live with her, but anyway, she did show me these things. That's my hospital, hospital badge, she said, in case I have to be rushed into hospital. Luckily, she never needed it, but it was packed and ready and put in the cupboard in case she did. Following her lead, I now have a packed hospital bag and I hope I will never need it, though I'm not sure John will remember where I've put it, should I ever need it. We need to be ready, but we do not need to be ready in fear because Christians have nothing to fear from the second coming of the King. The King is known to us, the King loves us, the King died for us, and the King is ready to meet us in person. So we should be eagerly anticipating the day when he comes. Advent candles remind us that time is passing and that we need to get ready for the second coming of the King. The Son of Man will come on the clouds with great power and glory. Therefore, let us be ready to keep watch. In the days I was talking about, of course, only men stood watch. No women were allowed. They thought they would be too weak and puny to fight off invaders. But nowadays we are all called to be watchmen or watchwomen. And we cannot know the hour when we are needed, but we must be ready. Only recently we have seen the sad battles between Palestine and Israel and the awful massacres that took place. As soon as that happened, all their reservists were called up. Every eligible man and woman who lives in Israel has to become a reservist in the Israeli, Israeli army, unless they have some kind of disability that precludes that. So they have to be on constant watch. They never know when the phone will go and say, get your uniform, get your gun, and make your way to a point where you'll all be collected together. And we saw that happening. And we've seen some of them in action. And sadly, some of them have been killed. We too have to be ready at a minute's notice when we are called to go and be the servants of the king. If we served in the palace of King Charles and we were told that he was returning, having been away somewhere, what a spring clean there would be before he came. Everything would be dusted and polished and washed so that it was fit and sparkling for his return. We are called to make our world fit for the returning of the king. How then do we make it a fitter place? Do we take our dusters? Do we take our pledge? Do we make sure that everything is spick and span and every surface is polished? It's a bit bigger than that. In order to make our world fit for the return of the king, we must keep our eyes open for what needs to be done. And we must use our time well in order to better our world. We need to make it a fitter place, a cleaner place, a place where less is thrown away, a place where people are equal in the sight of everyone and we regard their needs as our needs. We must keep our eyes open for when that time will come because we do not know how much time we have left to prepare. Just as the Christmas lights bring joy to the dark December days, so our lights as Christians must shine out brightly in the world to lead others to Jesus. What a glorious day of rejoicing the second coming of Jesus will be, and his coronation here on earth will be far greater than any coronation we have ever seen. Earthly kings and queens may come and go, but our heavenly king reigns forever and one day we will live with him forever. It is a hopeful message, the story of Advent. It tells of a time to come. It tells of better days. 
It tells of a time when no one will ever go hungry. No one will be sick. No one will be troubled. They will all dwell in the presence of the King. Their needs will be met, whatever their needs may be. And the glories of that world can only be imagined. Are we ready to play our part in that as we fit ourselves to serve the King? You don't need to go to a gym. You don't need to lose several stone, though it might be good for your health and my health if we did. In order to make yourselves fit for the King, you need to make his acquaintance. In order to make yourself fit for the King, you need to read about him in the Bible. In order to make yourself fit for the King, you must pray to him and ask him for the things that you and other people need. It is doing, in doing these things that we make ourselves fit for his coming. It is in watching that we know that we will be ready when he does come because we have kept our eyes open. It is in caring for our world, making it fit for his coming, that we are serving him. May God help us this Advent to shine out brightly in the world in which we live, to make that world a fitter place and to do all we can to see that the hungry are fed, the sick are tended, the homeless are housed and everyone has a fair share of this world's goods. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, during this season of anticipation, we remember those who are suffering and in need. We pray for the hungry, the homeless and the marginalised. May we, as your hands and feet, reach out to offer comfort, sustenance and hope to those who need it most. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask for your guidance and wisdom to be with our leaders and decision makers around the world. May they make choices that promote justice, equality and the well-being of all. Grant them the courage to act in accordance with your divine will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we pray for all those who are suffering from illness, grief or despair. Bring your healing touch to their lives and comfort them in their times of need. May they find strength and hope in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear 
our prayer. Holy Spirit, during this season of Advent, we seek to cultivate understanding and unity among people of different faiths and backgrounds. Help us to bridge divides, promote dialogue and foster respect and love for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the spreading of the gospel message to the ends of the earth. May your word be a source of hope, transformation and salvation for all who hear it. As we embark on this Advent journey, may our prayers and actions reflect the love, hope and peace that Christ brings to the world. In his holy name we pray. Amen. Glory fills the skies, Christ the